in 2017, the world learned about the efforts of a blockchain company, Chromaway, and the Swedish Land Registry Authority, Landmaterieet, with several other partners to apply blockchain, or at least what they call the blockchain, for real estate transaction. On their demo day, they showed the public their prototype system. Since then, we haven't heard about this project. Hi, I'm Dr. Alexey Konashevich and you're on Blockchain State. It's a new episode of case studies about the application of blockchain technologies in land registries. I'm referring to a report published by project members, as you see its title on the screen, and a YouTube video of that demo day. You can find the links to the report and the video in the description. So what was the project about? I will divide this discussion into two parts. Uh, first, what they claimed and showed, and the second, my perspective and analysis. The purpose of this project, which they called a test bed, was to build and test the technology and understand legal process and security problems that should be taken into consideration before the project is launched. The focus was on designing a digital workflow for a typical sale of property with a mortgage. In the part where they discussed the use of digital tokens, they call it in an old-fashioned way, color coins, they say that there were no intention to tokenize or digitize property rights. Many people who have heard of this project have thought that we are trying to implement a solution for digital transfer of land similar to Bitcoin transfers. This is not the case. Digitally representing all of the packages of land in Sweden so that they can be traded directly on the blockchain without the involvement of land material, agents or banks is not the ambition of this project. And there are no such plans for the future either. This was the major disappointment of this project for many blockchain enthusiasts who observed it. In this report, they identified 34 steps of a typical real estate purchase and borrowing money from a bank. The process involved interested parties, a seller and a buyer, agents, banks on both sides, and the Swedish land registry. As a result of the proposed solution, they could innovate 19 steps, and in most of the steps, they used blockchain, or at least what they called the blockchain. I won't be explaining the application architecture in detail, but I will outline some basic ideas. First of all, they develop a web application for all participants of the property transaction, so they can interact with it. No, it wasn't decentralized application, but a conventional client-server web app. Secondly, they connected the app with a distributed ledger, Chrome Away, to ensure all attached documents get hashed on that ledger. I'm not saying blockchain because I can't call it so, and I will explain it in my analysis. They added a centralized ID solution provided by TeleID, which also included an electronic signature application. In the European Union, a digital ID and an electronic signature are pieces of the same framework, so usually it comes in one package. If you don't know what it is, you can watch my video about eIDS and find the link to it in the description. The app logic is designed to mimic the existing real estate transaction process, which also includes property inspection, getting uh, a loan from the bank and registration of the title conveyance and the mortgage in the land registry. So now let's analyze it. First, it's not a peer-to-peer -peer transaction on blockchain and not a digital exchange. And they explicitly said about it, no digital token represents the ownership. There is no digital payment solution. They used the digital ID though and the signatures, but not with the keys and addresses on blockchain, but off-chain using standard EIDS compliant signatures. And what they call a smart contract is not a Turing complete smart contract on blockchain, but just a program that runs on a central server and executes 
the pre-designed workflow on the title conveyance and the mortgage deed. Continuing this idea, I also have to state that there is also no smart contract of a mortgage. So the mortgage deed happens off chain. The app only outlines the results. The bank confirms the provision of credit by notifying other participants on the app. One of the reasons why it can happen in digital form in their application is that there is a missing element of a digital payment solution. It also happens in a conventional way. Parties just acknowledge payments on the app. Having a fully digital exchange of a title tokens for digital payment would be undoubtedly very beneficial for parties, but having these elements in digital form would also enable the digital mortgage as the relationships do not end with the exchange transaction. For the buyer and the bank, they actually begin with it. So the title token could be brought under the control of the smart contract that would also control further repayments by the borrower and could enable automatic legal action in case the borrower didn't pay. They claim they do away with paper documents and replace mail communications with electronic. But reliable solutions with electronic signatures have been in Europe since 1999. You don't actually need blockchain for that. Now what about the role of the land authority? So in their report they often emphasized that uh, blockchain is a reliable technology that ensures highly secure and immutable digital storage much better than a centralized one. So logically anyone should ask why the land registry would be planning to keep relying on the centralized database instead of opting into the proposed blockchain solution. Because all the exercises they do on that app followed by registering all steps on the blockchain according to their system design would eventually get registered with the land registry centralized system. The blockchain is a kind of registry. Why would they need to repeat the registration in an obviously more vulnerable system? My answer would be that the project was premature to ask and answer these questions. But having such powerful technology in their hands, they didn't try to rethink and find how to really reduce transaction cost and time for the buyer and the seller by eliminating all those third parties. Instead, they digitized all that bureaucracy and paperwork. They didn't question any intermediary's role and how it can be optimized and automated with technology. There was no intention to make the transaction for the owner and the buyer cheaper, faster and easier. This is the worst idea that can come in the era of blockchains. The technology of chaining user data and timestamps with hashes was invented in 1999 and nobody ever called it the blockchain. Blockchain is a decentralized distributed ledger with an open competitive consensus invented in 2008. Yes, I understand, the crowds call blockchain whatever they want. But for the sake of academic rigor, this class of technologies should be called DLT, Distributed Ledger Technology. You can watch my video that explain why private and permission distributed ledger is not decentralized. Also, I would add one more note about how they communicated the use of DLT. So they wrote that publishing hashes on blockchain would secure the documents. No, publishing a hash sum of a document would secure only this hash. The hash can be used to check the authenticity of the document, but not to secure it. I think they understand it as they wrote that they stored the document in multiple storages as backups, I assume. So I conclude it was in just incorrectly communicated. Not the documents were secured on DLT, but hashes. In conclusion, I have to say that since then I have never heard about any progress with this project in Sweden. 
I'm not sure why, but my best guess would be that there were people either in the government or within this consortium that asked these questions that I raised here. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. Like and subscribe if you don't want to miss new videos.